Chapter 5, A Gift from the Spirits, continuing to read from Duki, Suki, and Big Mole. For a long time, Big Mole lay awake thinking, surely the spirits were pleased with him. Had he not put flowers on the spirit tree, shrine, because of his burned hands? And had they not given the victory over Big Tao? Then there was Spindly Legs, Spindly Legs, the new calf. Now, could it be that the spirits had brought this baby to him because he was lonely? If he took her to the village authorities, would the spirits be angry? Would they put a curse upon him if he did not accept their gift? Oh, if I could only keep her, said Big Mo in a whisper, I would be so happy. I would not be lonely. The baby beside him stirred. He patted her gently with his big hand. He held his face close and said comforting words. The baby stretched up her tiny hand and touched his cheek. It was a warm hand, reaching out to him for love and protection from the unfriendly world into which she had been born. Big Mo felt emotions he had never known before. He had saved the baby from a terrible death, and now she depended on him. She was utterly helpless. She needed him. The tiny hand pressed lightly against his cheek was a pledge. He would keep her, care for her, as a father. He would teach her many things, but above all, he would love her and give her all the affection that he could. She was his gift from the spirits, and he would try to be worthy of that gift. I will keep her always, Mo decided. I will give her a name. Hmm, but I must take care. If I give her a good name, the spirits will think she is so nice. They will take her from me. If I call her Dookie, which means grief, the spirits will not desire her. Poor little baby. She has had her share of grief in her short life. I will also give her my name for she is a gift to me from the spirits. Dookie Mo, that will be her name. When the baby awoke and cried, Big Mo fed her more diluted milk and honey. Then he turned her on her side so she would not be lying on her tender, scratched back. This time she slept soundly, and for such a long time that Big Mo was worried. He put his ear close to her, to make sure she was breathing. Then he extinguished the light and lay down and soon was sleeping soundly. The bright sun rose over the palm trees along the border of the river and shone in the open door of the hut where Big Mo and Dookie, the tiny baby, lay sleeping. The man awoke, stretched himself, sat up and looked at the sleeping infant. He listened, but he could not hear her breathing. He touched her gently to see if she were still alive. She stirred lightly. With a sigh, Big Mo arose quietly, bathed his face in cool water, adjusted his garments, and prepared his breakfast. He put water and rice into the black kettle, placed it on the stones of the fireplace, and built a fire. Then he went to milk the cows. Soon Kola would be coming to take them to the valley where the green grass grew. Spindly Legs was eating her breakfast. She was standing quite steadily, wagging her short tail vigorously. You're doing all right, Spindly Legs, said Mo, patting her gently. I knew you would make it if you kept trying. When Big Mo finished milking, he strained the milk into the big jars ready to take to the village. He kept a gourd full for the baby. She would soon awake and be hungry. How tiny she looked lying there on the sleeping mat, so helpless and dependent. She was a precious gift 
from the spirits. Soon Big Mo heard the weird song which Cola sang as he came up the path. Big Mo wondered what Cola would say if he saw the baby. He would be sure to ask questions. Perhaps he would tell the police. The man hoped that the baby would keep would sleep until Cola had gone with the cows. But just as Cola was passing the door of the house, Dookie began to cry. Cola paused with his goad stick in his hand and peeked in the hut. There on Big Mo's sleeping mat was the baby. When Big Mo told what had happened, Cola said, You lie. You stole it from a funeral pyre, just as you tried to do the other day when I was with you. Don't you fear the spirits or the curses of the charm doctor? How did you dare to steal it from the spirits? But I didn't steal it, insisted Big Mo, standing up tall and looking down into Cola's frightened face. Have I ever lied to you, Cola? Cola shook his head. Mo continued, would I lie about anything as tiny and helpless as that baby? Would I steal from the spirits who've been good to me? They gave me victory over the challenger and brought me spindly legs, the new calf. If I stole the baby, I stole it from three savage dogs who would have devoured it. How much better it is that she's alive here in my home where she is safe. I tell you, Cola, it was the spirits that brought her to me. The dogs were dragging her up the hill path. Look, her little back is scratched. Cola looked, and he was almost persuaded that Big Mo was telling him the truth. He had never known him to lie. I will keep her, said Big Mo. I will protect her from harm. I will feed her, educate her, and give her a home as long as she will stay with me. I will love her, Cola, with all the love that I can give her. She needs me. She depends on me. She is so helpless. Cola stood as though stunned, looking at the baby. Slowly, he shook his head. I still can't make myself believe it, he said. Then suddenly he turned, dashed out the door, and ran to the enclosure for the cows. Waving his goad stick wildly, he chased the cows down the hill path so fast that he had to run to keep up with them. Big Mo prepared some warm milk as before. Taking Dookie on his lap, he fed her as he had done the previous night. It took patience to feed the infant, but he was glad to do it. He must be very careful not to feed her too fast, or she might choke. After Dookie had eaten all she wanted, Big Mo bathed the scratches on her back and put more on more oil. He placed the baby on her tummy on the mat and covered her lightly with a cloth to keep off flies and insects. He set the coconut shell of milk in a bowl of water to keep out the ants. Then, then Big Mo faced his problem. How was he going to carry two jars of milk and also carry the baby? He didn't dare leave her alone until he returned. But how did men carry babies? Mothers carried them on their backs or in the folds of their saris while they worked, but men's garments were different. Long, narrow strips of woven material wrapped several times around the body with the red fringed ends hanging down in front and back. Big Mo was puzzled. Finally, he decided to hang the two jars from the ends of a long pole and balance them on his shoulder. Then he would loosen the folds of his garment and tuck the baby, wrapped in a strainer cloth, inside, safe from harm. With the jars balanced on the pole carried on his shoulder, he would be free to use his hands to care for Dookie. Big Mo set out for the village, taking big strides as he went. As Mo had anticipated, the villagers asked many questions. Whose baby is it? Where did you get it? How are you going to fight with a baby on your hip? 
people gathered around to see the big man with a tiny baby. Some laughed, but Mo did not care. Some gave him advice about caring for her. He was glad for their interest and friendliness. He made a few inquiries, but nobody seemed to know anything about the infant. The only funeral had been that of a man who had died of a fever. There was no baby involved in this case. Even the charm doctor seemed uninformed. Do you think I would be the first to, you, hmm. Don't you think I would be the first to know, queried the charm doctor in his high-pitched voice as he shook the strings of bones and shells that hung around his neck? The spirits do strange things, but I have ways of finding out. There was no mother funeral since you burned your hands. Big Mo went to the authorities of the village and told his story. They listened with interest, and the headman said, you're a good man, Mo. I see no reason why you should not keep her. You are the reason she's still alive. Take her home and be gentle with her. Remember, you are a big man and she is very small. Better cut down a little with your drinking, too. You might neglect her at such times, you know. Yes, said Big Mo meekly. Cola has told me I drink too much from the gourd. I will cut down for her sake. And he pointed to the baby. What are you going to call her? asked the headman. Dookie, which means grief. I will keep her pro protect her and care for her as my own daughter. I can raise her properly, for I am not a poor man. She's a precious gift from the spirits, and I dare anyone to try to take her from me. Now that you say it is right for me to keep her, with those words, Big Mo turned and went his way.